Welcome back to the channel, y'all. If this is your first time to the channel, this is the number one and original Living in Galveston, Texas channel. Hi, my name is Sherry Hensley and I'm a realtor living and working right here on beautiful Galveston Bay. My team and I, well, we get calls from people just like you who are looking for information on places to live and local advice, and I absolutely love it. I love sharing my love of Galveston Bay with you. Here on this channel, we explore cool and unique things to see and do all along Galveston Bay so you can learn to live like you're on vacation every day. We discuss everything Galveston firsthand by a local. We're going to tour some really cool neighborhoods and condo buildings and driving tours and best of videos. And today's video is going to be a deep dive into the Oleander City, Galveston Island, Texas. We're going to talk about areas that you may not want to live in. Like many Houstonians growing up, with Galveston being only 45 minutes away, the Oleander City was our playground for the day, the week, or the weekend. We bought a canal house for a weekend home about seven years ago, and we literally spent one night here. I woke up and I was ready to sell my Heights bungalow and live like we're on vacation every day. I love my morning tea, watching the pelicans and the seagulls and, and the great blue herons fish in the canal. We also own a short-term rental out on the West End in Terramar Beach. And I gotta tell you, seeing the waves crash to shore and hearing the birds frolicking overhead and smelling the salt air and my toes in the sand, it's really just another level of nirvana for me. Now, these two houses couldn't be further apart as far as amenities and location. And well, that's what we're going to talk about today. You want to make a good decision about where you want to move and you need good information to make the next move. So today we're going to explore neighborhoods, everything from real estate to history and nearby amenities so you can make the most informed decision for yourself. So if you're thinking about a move to the Oleander City, or if you're just curious about this beautiful coastal Texas city, stick around because we've got a lot in store for you today. I want to start off today with a couple of questions for you to consider. What do you want out of your second home or your vacation dream home? Do you want to live in a historic turn of the century home with grand front doors and wraparound porches or a condo close to live theater, fine dining, galleries and museums, entertainment and nightlife? Maybe a high rise condo is more your liking, lock and go. Or like me, do you want to head out your back door early in the morning, take your boat out of your backyard slip to catch your limit of fresh gulf fish? Maybe you're looking for a vacation home for the grandkids and extended family to make more memories on the coast to last several lifetimes. Or are you more inclined to see history and architecture and eating, which that's another one of my favorite subjects that we'll talk about today. What are you gonna do with this home? What's important to you? What neighborhoods are good for what activities straight away and those that aren't? We're gonna start on the East End, Harborside Historic Strand. Now, I gotta tell you, I absolutely love the East End. This is the oldest area of Galveston. Here you see historic homes and condos and the historic strand and the wharf where Galveston really first began. There's so much to do here. Many turn of the century buildings are now converted to condos and shops and restaurants and galleries and hotels and entertainment venues. Some of my favorites are the Railroad Museum, the 1894 Grand Opera House, and some of my favorite restaurants are there too. Riondo's, Saltwater Grill on Post Office, Vargas Cut and Catch on Post Office. Harborside is where you're going to find multiple cruise ports, the Tall Ship Alyssa, the USS Texas and Dry Dock, the Offshore Drilling Museum, as well as Fisherman's Wharf, and two of my favorite restaurants on the island. Lord, I must admit, I've got quite a few though. Willie G's and Katie Seafood House. Should you find yourself in need of first class medical care anywhere on the island, UTMB Galveston is right here. Now, I wanna be sure that you understand, Galveston is about three miles wide and about 32 miles long. So really anywhere on the island, you can get to this emergency room pretty quickly. Now, if you're in a condo or a historic home downtown, you are gonna get a first-hand look and touch and feel and smell of all the festivals like the Yaga's Wild Game Cook-Off, the Shrimp Festival, 
Mardi Gras parades, balcony parties, Dickens on the Strand, Lone Star Rally. Now, if you don't want to be in the big middle of all the fun, the Historic Strand is probably not the right area for you. I love the Historic Strand area and all the entertainment options, but what if you want to be close to the entertainment, but you want to be on the beach too? Well, next we're going to talk about East Beach. First up, Beach Town. Now, if you want beachfront Victorian architecture, Beach Town could be for you. Beach Town is a beachfront gym with its architecture steeped in that historic architecture that offers a nostalgic glimpse into Galveston's past. Now, developed in 2014, there are about 65 meticulously crafted homes with meticulously planned streets and beachfront setting make it a coveted spot for those who are captivated by historic charm but really need all the modern conveniences we desire today. Another beautiful property on the beach is Palisade Palms, built in 2008. Now, this luxury high-rise condo has two 27-story towers, 288, two, three, and four bedroom units. The Palms has a three-level, 370-car parking garage. Pure luxury awaits you with a resort-style lobby and amenities like a fitness center, coffee shop, private dining, bar area, game room, spas, library, pool, gazebo, and grilling areas. Now, this is one of my favorite areas on the East End is the historic East End. Turn of the century cottages and mansions like the Bishop's Palace and Ashton Villa and Sacred Heart Catholic Church and Moody Mansion and the League House with tree-lined streets and southern porches adorned with ornamentation of the season. I gotta tell you a story. I once sold a cottage on post office whose ownership history was said to be built by a local Galveston ship captain. Now, story has it, he built three homes, one for each of his three daughters. It was pretty common at the turn of the century for the father to take care of the girls. I absolutely love the history here. There are a couple of different opportunities to see turn of the century homes and learn more about the families through stories and images. Some still have furnishings of the time. The Galveston Home Tours and East End Home Tours are a great way to see architecture, design, and hear stories of the great storm of 1900. This is really one good reason to live on the East End. Now, if you love ultra-modern architecture with minimalist lines and you don't want to deal with the maintenance or the upkeep of a turn-of-the-century home and you really prefer low maintenance, maybe with concrete as opposed to gardens and lawns and landscaping to contend with, if you're looking to stay away from the parades and the festivities and the fun, the historic Strand area, the East End, may not be a good area for you to live. Next up, I want to talk about seawall condos. The San Luis Resort is probably one of my favorite and the only full-service luxury high-rise on the island. This property is like a luxurious vacation dream come true. You may have to pinch yourself to make sure you're not dreaming. I'm serious. I love the lobby with large faces and fresh flowers and the piano and the decorated walkway into the lobby. The San Luis never disappoints. From the time you pull up, the valet greets you. It's upscale and top-notch service. Its lavish amenities include oceanfront views, dining options. It's just gonna make your taste bud dance. They offer five-star convention meeting space and restaurants, Grotto, Blake's, Rainforest Cafe, Landry's Fine Seafood and Steaks, and of course, the San Luis Steakhouse. You will get a glimpse of all the parades of the season right here on the seawall. This is where all the activity and the tourists are gonna be. Now, the Dawn is next up, and this property was built in 1996 as a luxury apartment complex with, I think, 193 units. Now, after Hurricane Ike passed through in Galveston 2008, the property was purchased by an investment group, and the new owners completely renovated all the units and sold them as condo units. Now, what I love about this property is that the grounds are lush and the landscaping is mature and beautifully maintained. The Dawn offers one to three bedroom condos with either a balcony or a patio, many with awesome golf views. 
The Dawn has a 24-7 fitness center, lovely grounds, two sparkling tropical pools, one is heated. The Dawn is budget-friendly beach living without sacrificing all the good stuff. It's no wonder the Dawn was voted the best condo community three years in a row. Near West End. Now, Evia, this is one of my favorite new home subdivisions in Galveston. I love the lakes and the lush landscaping. It feels like a small, quaint little town in the city of Galveston. You're gonna see neighbors walking and talking on their shaded wraparound porches. The amenities include a pool and a cabana, a children's playground, We've got a sweet little coffee shop and little buffalo grill. Still just a mile or so from downtown. Remember, we're an island just three miles wide, so you can always enjoy all the island entertainment. Hey, if you like to play golf, this community is right next door to Moody Gardens Golf Course. Moving on to Lafitte's Cove, this property was developed by George Mitchell, the pioneer of hydraulic fracking and a true Galveston real estate visionary. Lafitte's Cove is named after the pirate Jean Lafitte. He was one of the most notorious privateers on the Gulf Coast. Lafitte's Cove boasts a combination of luxury and privacy with easy access to the West Bay. Nestled on the bay side, Lafitte's Cove offers homeowners seeking a serene, natural environment while still being close to the city's amenities. Lafitte's Cove has about 175 custom-built homes and close proximity and membership to the Lafitte's Cove Nature Preserve. This is a beautiful luxury waterfront community. All of the homes are stately and sit on oversized lots. Diamond Beach. Diamond Beach was built in 2009. It's got seven floors and 120 two and three bedroom units. It's all about the luxury at Diamond Beach. 24 hour concierge, security, covered parking garage, controlled access. They've got 16 penthouses and wonderful floor to ceiling windows to allow that natural light to flood your unit and see those amazing gulf views anytime, day or night. They've got a spectacular lazy river pool, water park, full service spa, game room, business center, fitness center with amazing views and even a movie theater. Now we're gonna move on to the West End and I call the West End the quiet end. There aren't a plethora of restaurants or grocery stores or shopping or entertainment, but it's close enough within 15 or 30 minutes. Now, if you wanna get away to recharge, fish, read, sun, kayak, in peace and quiet, without all the entertainment, without all the flashing lights of the Pleasure Pier, or the fine dining on the Strand, this area is for you. There are many, many, many wonderful neighborhoods here in Galveston. I want you to realize that I'm only touching on a few of my favorites, or y'all would literally be here all day. Hey, comment below and tell me what area you'd like to live in and why. Pirate's Beach. Now, this is another one of my favorite beachfront neighborhoods, period. Pirate's Beach was developed by the pioneer of fracking and the real estate visionary who developed Lafitte's Cove, George Mitchell. Pirate's Beach has about 700 homes on large, oversized lots, and this neighborhood embodies the essence of coastal living with its beachfront properties and stunning gulf views. Now, the beauty of this area lies not just in its sandy shores, but also in the diverse architectural styles. Now, you're gonna see classic little beach cottages to sprawling modern estates. I love gardening and I gotta tell you, I love pulling into the entry of Pirate's Beach. It is always a treat. I love the landscaping. It's mature and always blooming. And let me tell you, the beach is literally at your feet. Next on our list is Beachside Village. This is a small upscale walkable community with green belts and sidewalks in a laid back beach setting developed in 2003 by the Kahala Development and the Reinhardts. Now the Reinhardts are known for other luxury beachfront real estate developments you've probably seen on 3005, like Kahala Beach, Kahala Beach Estates, and the Sands of Kahala. Beachside Village is reminiscent of Galveston at the turn of the century. It's a small community of about 259 homes known for its luxury Victorian-inspired beachfront homes. The developers plan to add a new section of about 89 more lots to bring the total of 348 lots 
on the beach in this beautiful gated Victorian seaside paradise. Next up is Jamaica Beach. Now, this beautiful area was developed in the 1960s and sits on about 320 acres and it boasts a vibrant community with a plethora of homes dotted along the shoreline and bay. Jamaica Beach has its own police, fire department, restaurants, convenience store, a gas station, and churches. Now, I get this a lot and this is purely my personal opinion. Why not serve side or Bolivar, Crystal Beach. Okay, I get it, I get it. I have clients that like Surfside. My buyers like the pricing a little better in Surfside. And I personally like the slow 10 mile or so one way drive on the beach. We enjoy seeing the Surfing Santas annually and the St. Patty's Parade and having lunch at the Blue Seahorse on the beach. But here are the honest negatives for me, a city slicker, I see more people complain about the city water system on social media and many have put in whole house water filtration systems. Water is a basic necessity and that's a huge concern for me. Second, there isn't a whole lot to do in Surfside, comparatively speaking to, let's say, you know, Galveston. There aren't a lot of options for dining or shopping or entertainment. So if you're looking for a quiet getaway where you can cook and enjoy the Gulf breezes and you can surf or fish or just enjoy the peace and quiet, not to mention the distance to medical care, as we age, we're concerned about how quickly I can get myself or my husband to a hospital in case of an emergency, which brings me to why not Bolivar Crystal Beach? Now, don't get me wrong, I like Surfside and I like Bolivar Crystal Beach. As a young person, I spent quite a bit of time on the weekends and Sundays at Crystal Beach and Surfside and Calveston. This was our playground. Now, here's a huge negative for me. I used my Google Maps from the big store, which is the best store across the ferry in that area. So I Google mapped it from big store to UTMB emergency room. In December, it's about an hour. One hour! Y'all, it's crazy. Now, if you're talking about spring break to Labor Day, you just better forget about it. Now, one Sunday, I negotiated a nice Sunday morning drive with my husband over the Bolivar Ferry. I planned we'd go over the ferry in the morning, usually a 20, 30 minute leisurely ride, look at the architecture, take pics of the lighthouse, watch the dolphins and the seagulls, you know, look for shells, brown pelicans, be just do all the touristy stuff. We went to cruise around, we took a walk on the beach and we had lunch. The only caveat was that we had to be home by three to watch a game. Now, I love riding the ferry, it's free and it's a great way for about 75 vehicles to shuttle back and forth across to the Bolivar Peninsula and then back again to Houston. This particular Sunday, my husband and I, we got over the ferry, we enjoyed the drive around, we had an okay Mexican lunch and we started to head back and oh my God, that line was pretty long. We kept noticing cars and trucks and RVs, company trucks, plumbers trucks, all buzzing past us to cut in line. So y'all, there's a pass for residents and it's called a medical pass. This was on a Sunday, but it seemed like every local on this side of the ferry got a medical pass and they were all headed to the Galveston at the same time we were. Do you know it took us three hours to get back across the ferry to the Galveston side? And needless to say, well, my husband missed the game and I'm never going to live that down. I mean, there isn't really as much to do in Bolivar as there is in Galveston. They do have the Margaritaville Resort with restaurants and concerts. They don't really have anything that I would compare to Galveston. But let's talk about the beaches. The beachcombers will tell you they get some of the best shells and items that storms sent out to sea and then the sea sends them back to the shore in little pieces here after weather events. So if you really want to cook on the grill and recharge and fish or beachcomb and just relax, and you don't care about all the entertainment or shopping or dining or architecture or history, Surfside and Bolivar Crystal Beach, well, they may be perfect for you. But if you're a city slicker like me and you like to get dressed up for dinner or a concert or go to Art Walk or a play at the Grand Opera House, soak up all the parades and festivals, Surfside and Bolivar, then these two communities may not be for you. With Galveston's diverse real estate options, lively festivals, mouth-watering cuisine, stunning beaches and thriving tourism, 
There's never a dull moment in this coastal paradise. There is a neighborhood for every hobby, budget, and taste. This beautiful and historic coastal gem awaits you. If you've enjoyed learning more about Galveston, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that little bell, and join our community for more exciting explorations of amazing places all along Galveston Bay, just like this. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.